Well, here we are. After a couple of years of waiting, we finally had a chance to fly Cessna's long-awaited, uh, much ballyhooed, and uh, frankly, much celebrated for a good reason, Cessna 162 Skycatcher. Uh, having just spent a little bit over an hour in the air, and uh, not, not exactly the best test flying conditions uh, ever, 1,500-foot um, uh, ceilings and a lot of stuff hanging a little bit lower here and there, we've had a chance to give the airplane a fairly decent workout. Eight takeoffs and landings, a number of stall series, some accelerated stall work, and just working through the procedures. First things first, overall handling, outstanding. I mean, it, it's, it's what you expect from uh, Cessna Trainer Series. It's what you expect from the folks that gave you the 172 and 182 with some of the best stability and control profiles in the business. Overall, very, very well-defined uh, dynamic profiles, tight static margins. The unusual nature of the control stick totally disappears the minute you start flying it. It's like the stick was on the floor, but this time you got more room to work with. It's not as cumbersome. It's not in the way. Uh, it works out very well, and uh, you know when you get in it and play with it on the ground the first time around, you kind of look at this and go, well, this is going to be strange, and yet the minute you start flying it, it's like any you know, floor-mounted center stick you've ever had. Works really nicely. Uh, awfully good uh, pitch profile. Uh, just a little bit on the heavy side, which is what you want for a training environment. Airplane is a bit faster than one would expect. You have no problem at all seeing 115 to 118 knots in this thing. Uh, full tilt boogie, about 26 to 2650 revs. Good climb. We are pretty much grossed out on a uh, reasonable day. It's about 60 degrees. But uh, good 700 foot a minute uh, regardless, and those are at speeds a little bit faster than optimum. Flap deployment comes with a little bit of pitch up on first notch, a little bit of pitch up on second notch, a hell of a lot of drag, and a bit more pitch up on the third notch. Good speed degradation, especially on the uh, second and third notches. The third notch in particular will really bring it out of the sky. What's particularly notable, tremendous amount of energy. Surprising for such a light little airplane, this thing just goes on and on and on. I did a simulated engine out opposite the intended point of touchdown, and if I hadn't hard slipped it, I'd have been landing in the next county, certainly on the other side of Interstate 4. Ground handling, it's a uh, free castering nose wheel. It's obviously turned with differential braking. Uh, braking is obedient. It's got a uh, fairly tight uh, turning radius under the circumstances not hard to get a hold of. The rudder pedals are adjustable so you can bring them in and out very easily. It's a little dial just slightly behind where your heel would be. You're going to turn it in and out to bring the pedals back and forth. I found the pedal spacing to be a little bit close for my comfort. They're about a little, I'd say about an inch too close, which frankly is about the only bitch I can find with the airplane at this point. The G300 system rocks. Uh, they did a spectacular job. It's something I, I, I can't really explain after you know the better part of an hour in it. There's a tremendous amount of data, very well organized on smaller screens than we're used to with the G1000 series, but it's very well presented. Everything was right there. There's, this is a fully outfitted system with both a PFD and an MFD. Uh, the PFD is standard, the MFD is optional. But with both of these things at play, there's a tremendous amount of information. It's going to be very hard to be fooled into doing something stupid without the system uh, talking at you from one standpoint or another. On the low side, tremendous, tremendous, tremendous uh, low speed capabilities. Flies very, very nicely. A, a uh, full flap, throttle back to idle, you know, down into indicated mid 40s, a low amplitude, high frequency buffet, very symmetrical. Yeah, you can bat the rudder around a little bit either side, it's not going anywhere. And if, matter of fact, left on its own devices, it will pretty much uh, correct itself uh, and do very nicely in that particular regard. The brake, if, if what there is, is very gentle and you can fly out of it simply by just dropping the nose and not having to worry about jamming power or anything else. There is a fair amount of sync associated with it, but not as much as you would expect with something with this wing loading. Overall, major thumbs up. Awfully good job uh, for an airplane that everybody's been waiting for for quite some time. We have to tell you that we're tremendously impressed with the uh, first sky catcher that we've had a chance to fly. We look forward to flying a lot more. Uh, for those of you who are, would have one on order, you're going to have a ball. For the Aero News Network and for Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency 
flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus Airframe Parachute System. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com.